just coincidentally to go talk to the, to the FBI and to understand what it is that they do with this information. So this is, this is all hands, but it needs to be more than mental health. It needs to be more than the assessment and the training. And we know that we've got a NICS uh, 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 data bank system that needs to be addressed as well. Uh, we have a bill that's called the NICS fix, and, and you know the fact of the matter is, is we don't have all of our federal agencies that are inputting into the NICS system so that we have current information. Things like that are unacceptable in my view. That's the easy stuff that should have gotten addressed. And so there are, there are, are provisions that I think we can be looking to that, again, help on the mental health side, help with the assessment, help with the training side, uh, address the, the clear inadequacies that we have within our background check system, and, uh, and, then, and then deal in some of these other areas where we know we have way too many uh, open doors. What we cannot do is draw our red lines in the right now and say, forget it. I'm not even going to talk to you about that. I'm not even going to talk to you about that. Because if, if we get to that point where we cannot come together with the, the differing solutions and views on this and have the conversation, and, and, and again, we say we need to have a national conversation. Uh, we need to have that 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 discussion. But you can't have a conversation if you have said, I'm not going to talk to you if you're going to bring this up. And I'm not going to be in the same room with you if you're going to bring this up. This is too important. We cannot have a continuing escalation of tragedies in this country. So we got to come to grips with things. But the way that you start is not by drawing red lines. I just don't think we draw them. So. I wish I had easy answers. Another question? Yeah. Representative Sponholz. So you kick me out of here. You know? <laughs> okay. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Uh, Senator Murkowski, um, some might also call this a public health issue. But I'm going to segue to health care. You referenced it um, earlier a little bit. You referenced our, our $92 million supplemental mm -hmm. budget with regard to Medicaid. And um, we've experienced growth in Medicaid both because of expansion but also in our traditional population because we're in an economic recession. We have the highest unemployment in the nation right now, and we also have people increasingly underemployed, which is one of those things happen when budgets, when we're in recessions and budgets are tightened. Um, so I have a sort of a two-part question, and they both relate to the Affordable Care Act. Um, one is, you, do you anticipate any effort to reshape or redefine Medicaid at all coming up again? Um, and then also, you know, with the repeal of the individual mandate, we have a, a group of people who, have, who are continuing to be uninsured, and we need those people to enter the market. I know that Senator Collins has been trying very hard to identify a way to introduce sort of a, a bronze level. What's the status of that? Is there any hope, and can we help in that way? Well, yes, there is an effort to, to provide for that kind of lesser plan, if you will, focusing again on the priority for affordability. And, and, and again, when we think about where we are right now uh, with, with the debate over health care, to just say, well, we're just going to move on to other issues, leaves those families and those individuals who truly cannot afford that, that care. It's not that they don't want to. So repeal of the individual mandate didn't do anything within the ACA other than to say you're not required to, to purchase it. And so if you, don't, if, you don't, if you don't purchase it, then you're not going to be fined. But everything else within the ACA stays. But the problem still remains that for these families who, who were paying the fine anyway, they still can't afford their health care. So there is an effort. Uh, that is underway to, to help uh, uh, provide for a, a, a lesser plan. Uh, there are a couple other legislative efforts that, in my view, are going to be important to help stabilize the market. This is something that uh, I've been working on with, with, with the chairman and the ranking member of the health committee 
uh, Chairman Alexander and, and Murray have a have a, a bipartisan proposal that is out there that would provide greater flexibility to the states that that would help with just this uh, just with this effort. There's also another proposal that is at play, uh, also led by Senator Collins, but with Senator Nelson from Florida that would take the Alaska model. They're all, they're all talking about the Alaska model and what you did with reinsurance. I know it cost you $55 million. That was a, that was a big commitment and a big decision. But I think we have seen here in Alaska how that has paid off. We just found out that uh, our numbers were a little bit off, and for the first time in a long time, it was off in our advantage. So we're actually going to be receiving more uh, coming back to us from that. So there are efforts. Uh, what you can do, speak up as a legislature. I think I say this every year, that the resolutions that, that you provide us, um, when you can demonstrate a show of support in certain areas and say these are Alaska priorities, this, this helps us. Um, and I'm going to say the same thing to, to the mayors when I visit with, uh, with those that are gathered at, at AML uh, later today. So um, I, 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 would, I would encourage that push to us there. Um, OK, what was your first one? Medicaid. Oh, Medicaid. So do I think that there is going to be an effort to, uh, to revamp or, or restructure Medicaid? Absolutely not this year. Um, but you asked, you kind of left it open-ended. Medicaid, I think we recognize as the, as the, the program that it is, uh, having come about in the, in the mid-60s, um, we're looking at the sustainability of the Medicaid, Medicare, Social Security, the entitlements, um, and, and, and realize that our demographics have changed in the past 50 years. And so how we make these programs sustainable into the future, this is a challenge to us as, as a Congress. Um, it's kind of like you all and, and dealing with things like, like pensions and things that you really want to just jump right into uh, because they're so easy to address. Um, these, are, these are challenges for us, but in the long term, we must. But I don't believe that you will see, in fact, I'm relatively confident that you will not see uh, an effort to to reconfigure or reform Medicaid in this in this congressional year. Yeah. Representative Seaton. Mr. President, uh, Senator, uh, thank you for your action supporting pulling back um, uh, the offshore uh, leases to the areas that have been traditionally leased that concern uh, so many Alaskans. And you're, you're familiar very well with our fiscal problem and our lack of revenue to support uh, the kind of infrastructure development that would take place. And so my question is, is what is the possibility of Alaska getting that same 37.5% share of oil, that, uh, oil revenues from the offshore areas that Louisiana and the other Gulf states uh, share uh, instead of zero? Thank you. Well, thanks for the question, Representative Seaton, and, and know that offshore revenue sharing always has been and remains a top priority for me. Uh, that is something that we're going to, uh, hopefully you'll see us redoubling our efforts uh, with that, working with uh, other members from, from coastal areas. I think that that is, that's important. It's not just an Alaska uh, issue that needs to be addressed, but, but other other uh, states that have coastal offshore. I want to thank you for the resolution that uh, has come out uh, of the House here with regards to, to the OCS and, and the five-year plan. Um, I applaud Secretary Zinke for putting everything out there on the table. Now, there were some who said, oh my gosh, this is, he's, he wants to lease 95% of our offshore. Um, this is a little bit over the top. Keep in mind. What a, what a draft five-year plan is. It is a draft. There is a process. And, and so he began the first step. And the first step was to identify those areas that have the potential for leasing and have the public weigh in, have leaders weigh in, and then make a determination as to what should be reasonably incorporated within 
a five-year plan. But not everything that you put out there is going to stay out there. But unlike the previous administration, who took a very narrow view to what should be included in any five-year plan, they had identified a few, few small areas, put that out, and then from there, they took off. Because what happens within the, the, the formation of these five-year plans, you can't add anything on once that draft has been laid on. You can only take things off. So don't start with a very narrow base and then get it so skinny that you really can't do anything to benefit anyone. Let's start with a full meal deal, put it all out on the table, and then figure out what is appropriate and what is not appropriate. As the congressional delegation, we looked at it and said, hey, we want to send a strong message that Let's focus on the areas of highest interest. We certainly know the potential for us in, in our Arctic offshore. Uh, there's been ex exploration back in the 80s. Uh, just because Shell is not there right now does not mean that we don't have opportunities. Cook Inlet has been producing for us for 50 plus years. So let's make sure that these are on the table. But we also suggested that some of the other ones are not ready for prime time. So the secretary will take that into account. We had public hearings in Anchorage yesterday, I think it was. Um, and those hearings are going on all over the country. And so from that informed process that will take months and into the next year, the, the, the Department of Interior through the secretary will make a determination as to what will be included in the final five-year plan. But remember. It's a five-year plan. So if we decide, you decide, seven years from now, gosh, we've got extraordinary potential over in this area, we weigh in again. So uh, I'm, I'm pleased with the direction that they have taken. I'm pleased uh, that, that we've seen the level of, of public comment that we have. That will continue. Um, but in the meantime, what we need to be doing, what your delegation needs to be working on back in Washington, is to make sure that there is that level of equity when it comes to revenue sharing, as the Gulf of Mexico has, so we should be able to share in that. And it's not just the, those actual revenues. It's what we're trying to build into that, which will allow for uh, greater resilience, uh, tribal resilience funds. We incorporated it in in draft legis in, in legislation that we have introduced. So looking to do even more beyond that to provide for, for benefits to the impacted areas and states. It is, uh, it's now moved up on the priority list once we get some of these other ones that are taken care of. So we got time, time to focus on that one. Senator Murkowski, thank you so much for coming to visit us. Good. Yeah. Good to be with you. Good.